gonna probably win out most times. The exception to that rule is if I'm a container gardener. This is one of the questions that you guys asked and it was how do I ensure that my seedlings will be strong enough to take on a drought year? It's a good question. So we're gonna look at that here today. Up until literally a week ago, Saskatchewan had no water. Now, yes, we had a massive snowstorm. Is there literal feet of snow outside? Yes, I'm completely snowed in. However, mass dumps of water do not at all negate the fact that this summer is going to be a drought year, unfortunately. The reason for that is because the water, while it's there, is too much, too quick, and it can't be absorbed by the soil. So a lot of it, most of it, is going to run off into the drains, into the rivers, and out to the US. United States, you are welcome for the fresh water we develop here in Canada, one of our number one exports. It doesn't mean, it doesn't translate into anything good. And many of you, in the United States, Eastern Canada, and the far west, you definitely realize that there's not enough moisture to potentially sustain your garden. But there are two things you can do right now to your tomatoes and your peppers and anything you're starting indoors, your flowers, that sort of thing. There's stuff you can do now to make sure that when they do go outside, they have the best chance of survival and you're not gonna have to water every freaking day because that is a very real re reality in a drought season. Number one is root training. So, sounds crazy. You're not sitting there with like a piece of pepperoni being like, okay, plant, make your roots big. No, that's not what I'm saying. Although that would be hilarious if plants could do that. Actually, fun fact, they do think plants respond to music, but regardless, that in and of itself is going to make a huge difference. So I put a photo, I can't remember what video I was talking about, but, but ultimately speaking, I put in a really weird looking plant cell type thing, and that was a root trainer. So this is a very specific cell, and you don't start your seeds in this by any means. You transplant into a root trainer. So you start your seeds normal, and right now you're doing that. You probably wanna buy these here for the next month or so when you begin to train, root train your seeds. And what you wanna do is you want to plant your seeds inside of your seedlings, bump them up into the root trainer. You don't wanna sink them. Common misconception is that you should put them really nice and low and then the stem will make extra roots. That that is a myth, that is not real. Well, it makes roots and not the hairs. The hairs are trichomes, that's what make tomatoes smell. The roots are the bumps, like those little white wart things, those are the roots. What those roots do, they don't do much. Some water capture, some nutrient capture, but they don't get root hairs. They don't really help with a ton of water capture. They're inconsequential to your plant's health. What does make a difference is the main root biomass that is got the root hairs and the tap root and all that sort of stuff. And that is what we want to grow. So when you transplant these plants, what can I use? This is the plant. This is the root trainer. You're going to put, I'm doing this because I have like no seeds started right now. I've got zero seedlings. April, April, I'll have more, I swear. Say where my, this is a plant. This, my finger, is where the root the root, the theoretical root, meets said plant. Get it? Okay, great. This is your root trainer. Now, these are not root trainers. These are nowhere near deep enough for a root trainer. Regardless, you're going to take the top of the root trainer and you're going to put it right level with the root. Do not sink the plant. Our main goal with root training is to make root not to make advantageous roots. We want the root hairs to do the work for us. And if you sink it too deep, your plant's gonna put way too much energy into making advantageous roots out of the stem that will make zero difference for a drought and zero difference to your plant. What we want is we want the actual root system to make a root system that goes downwards and it's nice and long and there's lots of root hairs, that sort of thing. Because these, when we transplant these outside, that root system is already trained hence the name, to dig, dig deep, go downwards. We don't wanna go out, 
We don't wanna go out for superficial water, we wanna dig. And that is because despite it being a drought year, water exists in soil. And generally speaking, in drought seasons or just in soil profiles in general, the deeper you go, the more water you find. And if your soil profile is depleted from water, which is what causes a drought, it's kind of like a cup. The top of the cup has less water, the bottom of the cup has more water, and soil profiles act the exact same way as a cup of water. That is where you want the roots to go, and that is how you get the roots to go there, is via root training. Okay, so root trainers out of the way. The second way to get really great results is via air pruning. Now, you can get very specific containers for this. You can get air pruning containers, for example, or you can kind of DIY this on your own. So you can do, for example, um, biodegradable pots, uh, coconut coir, the newspaper pots. You can get uh, peat-based pots, anything that's biodegradable. Jiffy pods is another great example of this, where the roots eventually become exposed to air. So air, root exposure, actually burns the tip of the root off. I know it sounds bizarre. Roots do not like being exposed to air. The root tips of root hairs, tap roots, it doesn't matter when they're exposed to air, they fry off, they die off, but it's very similar to topping, like how we top a pepper, and we end up with a wying of the plant. So root comes up, it wise off, and then those root tips get burnt, and then that wise off, and you can very quickly see how fast we can accumulate root biomass via an air pruning system. So that is another great way to get your plants through a drought season because the more root biomass we have, the more access we have to water. Now, if I had to pick between air pruning a plant and root training a plant, root training is gonna probably win out most times. The exception to that rule is if I'm a container gardener. If I'm a container gardener, I'm growing in bags, um, whatever, buckets, you name it, I would go for air pruning because that is gonna make the difference. When it comes to making drought resistant plants, the honest to goodness secret is making the roots do the work for you. The upper biomass isn't going to contribute much to drought resistance. The only thing you could do with upper biomass would be more so in the spring and summer, which we'll talk about when we get there. But for right now, really truly focus on roots, root health, root development, and structure. How is it How is it designing itself? The more root hairs, the deeper it digs, the happier, healthier plant you will have long-term. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.